of the passion in you yeah. when you talk about it. You can tell it's not fake. Yeah, you're not just sitting here like <laughs> reading something mono until like you're, yeah, you you're, you're into it. You're you know, I started writing down my messages because um, you have a lot to say, people like to interrupt me. So, write my stuff down when I come up to a place like this. Yeah. Message. I'm gonna say that first and foremost. Second of all, all right. Give me some space. Gotta give me some space. Right. Give me some all. space. Give me some space, sir. Please. Can I get some space? All right. Thank you. Okay. You're violating the noise ordinance with the volume. That you're okay. Using. We're not saying you can't speak your message. I'm all for it. I agree with it, but you can't do it at the volume that you're doing. It's just disturbing to the public. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll turn it down. Thank you. I appreciate awesome. it. Thank you. God bless you. Hey, nothing the person though. It's just no, no, you know. Thing and all this stuff. You should wear a mask though. Totally fine. You're doing your thing. Never you know. know. It, just, it was just the volume. That was it. Okay. All, it all right. How many calls you got? How many just one. That? You got one call. Or you just was riding through the area. No, I only call. got one. Just one. one call. Yeah, just the one. Dispatch, okay. So far. <laughs> okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You go to church? Uh, not Christian? as much as I should. You're Christian. I am. Amen. Praise the Lord. Not Praise as much the Lord. As I should. You're making me want to go more though. I'm not yes. Fine. Yes. Yes. Go more because there's. There are things that are getting ready to happen in this world. There you go. This is for you too, sir. Next row. Oh, you want one more? Yeah, I'm a watchman, sir. My, uh, I'm a watchman, and I'm here to warn people to yeah, repent. I was gonna ask you that next. Mean, yeah. uh, you know Ezekiel, right? Honestly, I don't know the Bible yeah, as well as I should either. That's kind of why. I... <laughs> All right, you got time? You got a moment? You got a moment? Of course. Yeah. All right, let me go to Ezekiel. Oops, I believe I passed it. How does that plug? It's right after Jeremiah. It's not plugged. Barry, it's it's Barry. Okay. You ever? It's been That's a long time since. <laughs> yeah, here it is. This is what God said to Ezekiel. He says, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, now the sword is judgment. Right. So God is warning Ezekiel to warn the people that judgment is getting ready to come across like the land. Judgment day, like. Judgment for the sins that they've been living in. You see, when it comes to sin, there's there's a uh, there's a punishment for this. So God is telling them, um, when I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coats and set him as their watchman. So God is telling them if they listen. Now I'm going to go to verse 10, which says this. It, it just speeds it up a little bit. It says, therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, thus ye speak saying if our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them how shall we live so the people are asking the question so this is what god's reply to the people who are living in sin which is his chosen people the children of israel he says say unto them this is what he's telling ezekiel to tell the people he says say unto them as i live saith the lord god which god lives eternally there is no end he says i have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and in verse 10 live god wants them to live he says turn ye turn ye god god pleads with them two times he says turn turn from your evil ways for why would you choose to die now these people they don't they don't know that the way that they're living is to death so god wants them to live and um <laughs> So you, uh -oh. as the watchman, you're spreading the message that was given to Ezekiel. Uh-uh. I'm spreading the message that God wants me to spread. But I'm just, I'm just, let me finish here. He says, therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. So God is telling them, the good works are the works that you think is good. It's not going to deliver you in the day of your transgression. God wants them to repent. So that brings me to why I'm here. I'm here because the people in this town who are living in sin need to repent. And God, before he brings judgment upon the whole land, he first sends out street preachers and watchmen and prophets to deliver word to the people who cannot hear God. They can't hear him because they're deaf 
to the word of God. They're deaf by sin. Sin makes them deaf to the word of God. So God is telling me to come out to people in the flesh here and tell them about the warning, to warn them and remind them of what happened in the days of Noah. What did God do in the days of Noah? He destroyed the earth. Judgment is coming upon this land. Now, why would it be coming upon this land? Because this land is living rebellion against God. The whole world. The world is full of sin, huh? We full of sin, full of wickedness. But there are good people. And when I say good, I'm saying people who are living in righteousness, who are living according to God. You see, in, 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 the, in, in the Genesis, there was eight who were found uh, in the eyes of God, which were righteous. So God spared them, Noah and his family. So now today, God is calling people, whoever, to him so that they can be saved if they put their trust and their hope and their life in Jesus Christ and repent of sin. You, you preach at a church? No. You should. You should. You're not even joking. <laughs> yeah. You should. Yeah. You know, you really that's why I'm here. Positive message. You seem like yeah. you really enjoy it. Like you... Yes, but there, there are some that don't like me. There are some that they hear this message and they curse me out. What, different you know? religions? You mean, no, or? people. Just regular people. I had people who tried to kill me before for doing this. For spreading the word of the Yeah. Gospel. And it wasn't even the loudness of the speaker. It was just the fact of what I'm saying. I'm calling people out of their sin. And they don't want to come out. I'm telling them. That's how people are. Right? Fornication. Adultery. Greed. Unholiness. Dis disobedient to parents. Homosexuality. It's sin. Is sin. Yeah, it will that lead. That last one is really going to get you in trouble these days. It will take you to hell. But we say it. We say it in love. We say the truth in love because we want people to live. I'm not out here to annoy people. <laughs> what? No. I want them to live. If someone comes up and says to me, "What shall I do to live?" Listen, listen. Let me show you one more thing. I know you're a police officer. And you're busy. It's just once I get. So you have no problem talking to anybody who wants to come up and have a conversation. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter two. Let's see. See, I used to live in the world, and I used could not know the scriptures. Now, I know the scriptures. Oh my goodness! Acts chapter two, verse thirty-eight. Check this out. So this is what Peter. I get so excited. This is what Peter says unto them. He says, "Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ." This is the name that someone and everyone is going to be saved by. For the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And he says, 39, For the promise is unto you, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourself from this inward, inward generation. And they gladly received his word with, and, and were baptized the same day and were added unto them 3,000 souls. So going back before Peter said this, I just want to tell you, the people heard the message and they heard this and the message that Peter preached pricked their heart. It didn't prick their heart to de destroy them. It pricked their heart because they were like, oh my goodness, what should I do? And he says, they said, now when they heard this, they were pricked to the heart and said unto Peter and in to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what should we do? Let me ask you this. Were you a sinner at one point? Yes. It's not that I get into personal question, but did something happen in your life that woke you up? Or was it just... Babe, are you okay? Or? Yes, I am okay. Um, All right. God was calling me. people as sinners, you know, what can you tell other people? I was a sinner once. Well, I don't live in sin. I don't live in sin anymore. That's what I mean. What... What changed you? Was it like one thing that happened one day or like an incident like a near death? I was running from or? God for a long time. God was calling me to do this and I was running. I used to be in the music industry, so, you know, I had popularity. I was on TV, news, uh, the newspapers, the magazines, everything. I, I, I had it all. And God told me one day, he came to me, he says, if you continue living this way, you're going to die. And God showed me end of that route and then you, what made you that lucky though be picked by god to be told that you know what i mean like i'm sure not everybody i mean me again he's like you said maybe people are deaf to it and they don't god the, the word of god says that god is no respecter of persons he's no respecter of persons which means he's asking this man and he's asking you and you and he asked he's asking everyone to repent 
it's no special people. It's just I heard the call and I heeded the warning. I had a home invasion happen in my life. And that got, my, my life was inches from taking away. I was, I was asking, like a near-death exit usually. I am telling people today, don't ignore this call. Listen to the word of God. God will give you peace. He will give you joy. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, the Bible says, let me go to it. She's like, dang, he knows, this, knows where the scripture's at. 29. No, I, I don't like to do it on top of my head because I do a dishonor to God if I mess his word up. 29, uh, verse 11. I just want to say this to you real quick with, with excitement. He says, this is what God says. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. When God says give you an expected end, he wants to take care of everybody. The murderers, the rapists, the liars, the thieves. God wants to give them a renewal, a, a, a change of mind. And Jesus came and died on the cross so that we can have eternal life. And you don't know today, this could be the first day. This could be the moment right now, officer, that you say you know what i need to be more serious with god i need to take him more serious listen to this he says verse 12 then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go i'm gonna say it in english terms and then shall you call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and i will hearken to you so god is telling his children chosen people israel that he will hear them if they turn away from sin and he and, and pray unto him and he says, ye shall seek me and find me, and ye shall search for me with all of your heart. The Bible says, if you draw near to him, he will draw near to you. If you draw away from God, he's going to draw away from you. Because remember, sin separates you between you and God. I've never heard anybody but, put it into such normal terms. Yes. You know, a lot of people, like growing up, you go to church, you'd hear the, the priest talk, and it's, I don't understand a lot of the words they're saying, but when it's broken down into simple English like you just spoke, it makes a lot of sense. It's not, going to church is not going to save you. It's going to church is not going to save you. What saves you is your belief, your trust, and your hope in Jesus Christ. I was a womanizer. I slept with many different women. I cussed. I did all these horrible things. Now look at me. You will never know because I'm born again. Look happy. Filled with this Holy Spirit. Yes. Um, I wanted to be a train conductor. <laughs> and God said no. This is what you're going to do. And I, I was so mad at God. I was like, Lord, why, 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 why? Why can't I be a train conductor? And the Lord says, the ways, this is the, this is, I'll never forget this. He said, the way that you live, well, you will never, oh, oh, okay, I remember. He says, you'll never find happiness in the way that you live by living my way. So if I live God's way, I'll find true joy and happiness. If I live my own way, right. I'll never be happy. And you know what? Doing the music industry and everything, I was, uh, uh, I was going through a, a, a lot. And I had three million people following me on Twitter. Millions of people. I had it all. I was never happy. So you look a lot happier now than you would have with three million followers. I had emptiness in my heart. No matter what, drinking, smoking. I can never feel that. I can never fill it up. Now I fill it up go. by God's spirit. It's God that filled that emptiness inside of me. God is letting everybody know you can never be happy unless you have him. You'll never know what true life is, true life and joy until you find Jesus. It's Jesus. There's a lot of people that are in bondage right now. Look at these people. Look at them. They're, they're in their cars and they're in everything. But when they die, guess what happens? All of this stays here. I was watching a video of a police officer that was at a traffic stop. You probably saw this already. You probably know about this. And the man, they had a struggle with the man and the man pulled out a gun and shot the sergeant. The sergeant died. Now, I'm going to tell you, recently there was some situations. Uh, some towns I go to, the police get really mean and angry and crazy at me. And in some towns, I'm good. I kind of lost respect for the police. Um, but when I see officers like you, like I said, don't it kind of goes right back up. Don't judge everybody by a few, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. I see good officers like you who come out and just tell me, turn it down. Yeah. You're not telling me, hey, you got to leave. I've had police officers telling me, you got to pack up and you got to go. We're fine with it. We're Free to no speak the word, just do it at a decent level. That's all Yes, yes, yes. I had it at 50%. I'm going to turn it at 15. Yeah, yeah. 
No way. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'd hate to hear a hundred. Well, you know, yeah. like, about being in the music industry. <laughs> I, I have a big, powerful speaker like this because sometimes I go out to intersections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. There are wide open yeah, spaces. Yeah. Metal lands at that. <laughs> Seriously, that's got some power. If that was only 50. That's only 800 watts. Yeah. Well, I'm telling you, right down the street on Saturday, my daughter's first Holy Communion. So I'm trying to raise my kids. Communion? Yeah. So she's going to be getting her first communion, and my son already had his, and he's working toward confirmation. She ever been baptized? Yes. Okay. Both kids. Absolutely. Immersion? Uh, Going back in the water, coming back baby, up? baby, yeah, dip the head. Okay. All right. Um, a couple months old. So she made the decision to accept Christ, Jesus. Okay. All right. Because well, again, she was very young, but uh, it's my job as a father to make sure that she goes in the right direction. I tell you today, man, you got to make sure that she is baptized. Um, Jesus said, "Unless you be baptized by the water and the Spirit." Let me go to that scripture. <laughs> I don't like to take stuff out of out of word on top of my head, and I don't say it correctly because here it is, John chapter three. He says, this was a man named a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The words are in red. That's Jesus talking. Um, he said, uh, 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 God so love the world. Um, okay, here it is. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto ye, unto, unto thee, unto you, y you, ye, must be born again. It's King James Version. You must be born again. And then Jesus goes into a metamorpher about the Holy Spirit. He says, The wind bloweth where it, le where it, where it goes, and thou heareth the sound thereof, but cannot understand or tell where it goes or cometh. He says, So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The Spirit that he's talking about is the Spirit of God. You must have the Holy Spirit in you. And the Holy Spirit only comes into a person when they are born again, when they have repented of sin and turned from this world to God's will. Were you baptized as a child or yes, was I was, later in life? Yes, I was baptized at the age of 12, but um, I got baptized again. Rebaptism is, is biblical, it's okay. Um, verse 3, he says, Jesus said unto them, unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Now, this is not just talking about baptism. It's talking about changing and coming to God and being born of God's spirit. It's, either, it's two sets of people in this world. There's only, what do you call it? Uh, unbelievers and believers. Non-believers and believers. Believe. Saved or lost. Satan is real in this world. He's roaring around, running around. He would love to use you to make me go away. Absolutely. So these people don't hear the message. So I appreciate you working with me, turning down the volume. Thank God, you know, because I really want to get this message. I got a good message here. If you want to sit by and listen, you're more than welcome. I don't know what's going on in Hawthorne today. <laughs> but I got a, go, a, a good message today. Um, it's called, uh, go to it real quick. I was going to give that other message today, too. Um, these are all the messages that I wrote. Uh, it's called That Perfect Mirror. But I actually was going to give the message called Do You Serve Him? I think I should do that message. Do you serve him? Talk about Joshua, how he's a warrior for God. I love so. the passion in you. Yeah. When you talk about it, you can tell it's not fake. Yeah, you're not just sitting here like <laughs> reading something mono until like you're, yeah, you you're, feel it. you're into it. You're you know, I started writing down my messages because people like to interrupt me. So, write my stuff down when I come out to places like this. I, I speak and I talk. I think a lot of you have you been to Hawthorne before? No, it's my first I, I time think here. You'd, you'd probably be, I don't think you're gonna have many problems. Like I said, if it wasn't for the noise, nobody would have called us. I don't know how long you were out here before we got here, but you know, people are pretty open for the most part in this town. A lot of Catholics, a lot of Christians in this town. You wouldn't believe what the police want to do to me. Listen, I trust you. Again, don't judge us all by a few. I trust you. That's why I'm gonna give it to you. This is my website here. Okay, my YouTube page is on there. I want you to see what I go through on a daily basis. Here, you want one of your own? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Oh, you got the YouTube people dogging you? Yeah. I Seriously? want you to see oh, what I go through. Other officers. Really? Yes. Yes. Like I said, judge me for me. Don't These judge police? Me for the other cops. I'm sorry These, if you got kicked out of somewhere, you know, that's 
No, See? not that, man. Do what you gotta do. Just have that you know, just why you, just how you guys are, are towards me right now. This makes me just continue to trust the police, and you know, because I'm for the police. I'm not well, Black Lives Matter. We're not all like that, but you know, what I'm saying I'm a little <laughs> part of me has kind of. You know, had you know lost respect, but when I see officers I like you, it's you know, thing, man. It's, it's but I, I'm treating you with respect world. today. It's just when you came up to me, I was like, give me a little I space because you. you know, I'm not used to the whole uh, as, as much as I should be the whole backing up thing, you know, with the whole COVID and all that. I'm yeah, see, now I'm not no, no like now I'm not no problem. Like, now yeah. I know you now. I can yeah, yeah, I, I spoke to you, so but when I when you first came up, it's I was good, like, man. oh, I don't know. So it's all good. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take off though, but all right, God bless you.